Mike Pendleton here with the On The Mic podcast. And as you know, this YouTube channel is turning away from just combat sports. And I'm going to be talking about the topics I want to talk about with the people I want to talk to them about. And this man, I've got a lot to say in this intro, so bear with me. This man gave me the honor of the first time ever being on television and looked way better on TV than I did. Uh, and I was absolutely wrong in everything we talked about. He gave me the greatest compliment I received at covering any sporting event in my life when I was uh, at the Sunday night football game for the Chicago Bears LA Rams game a few years back. He is the son of the legendary Chicago Bear, Walter Payton. You saw him take center stage with Steve McMichael at the Hall of Fame ceremony this year. He's the one and only Jared Payton, anchor at WGN Sports and GN Sports TV. Sir, how are you? Good, man. How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. And uh, as always, thank you for giving me any of your time. I know you're very busy, um, but we let's just jump right into it. We obviously, I, I just mentioned the Hall of Fame ceremony. I know how much Steve McMichael means to you. It was a beautifully uh, well put together, you know, uh, enshrinement video for it from you. What was that moment like for you? Mike, it was pretty crazy, man. Honestly, I mean, to I, I think about it all the time to to be able to do it once is pretty special. And I did that back in 93 for my pops. And then, you know, you never think you're going to do it again. And like times have changed back then. It was like you get up on stage and and, you know, you got to wear a suit and 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 wasn't as big as it is now when you think about it and you look at the production wise. But um, pretty cool moment to have NFL films come to my house, sit down with me and just kind of like they set the setup was an hour. Then the interview was an hour with someone from NFL films out in L.A. And then they kind of piece it together and that's what's being shown at home, but then also on the Jumbotron. So it was pretty cool for me. First time, see, it was my first time seeing it sitting on stage in Canton. So I didn't like get a preview of it. And then it was like, oh, it's going to be awesome. I was watching it like first time, just like everybody else. And, you know, they, they killed it. They knocked it out of the park. Well, I knocked it out of the park, I think. And yes. then them piecing it together. Um, they did a really, really good job of doing that, man. And, and, like I said, mission complete now, man. Steve McMichael's in the Hall of Fame. And that was that was the reason why I was there. It was all about him. But I mean, just to be able to see, you know, my family there and to be able to see his family there. It just the only thing that was missing was him being there. Like I I wanted his voice to be the voice. Could you imagine what his voice would have been like? I mean, he it, Mike, he gave some of the best speeches. His mongoisms were the best. The fact that we we have been we have been robbed of his voice. That's the one thing that got to me sitting up on that stage because his speech would have been the the best out of all of them. And that's what for we sure. that was the only thing missing for for that week. I have one interaction with Steve McMichael. I was leaving a charity golf tournament when I used to work with Jason McKee a lot. And out in the distance, he could see the cops pulled somebody over. And he goes, well, kid, don't let them get you and make sure you always know where they are. And I was like, "That I love that. I love that. Yeah. Um, but it, it was such a big week. And, and Jared, one reason I wanted to reach out to you was because there's so many former players, not just with the Chicago Bears, but in football as a whole, that carry the legacy of maybe their former team or just their career. And they do so amazing as broadcasters. You yourself, I think you have a very unique opportunity to carry not only your father's legacy, but the legacy of all his teammates and the 85 Bears, while also covering currently what seems to be a new era and a new generation of Chicago Bears football. How special is that for you? So crazy right now. I mean, I've been in this business for, well, man, it's forever. I mean, we're talking double digit years, <laughs> but now, but just on the TV side, I've been at WGN for, this is going into my eighth year. And so, you know, and I know there's been, it's been the Mitch Trubisky year, you know what I mean? Like there was, there was those years, there was the Justin Fields years, and then now we're at a, at a, at a new era. And I think right now is, I've never seen 
a fan base so excited about what is to come or what could be for the future in a long time. And it's hard, Mike, because I cover this team on a daily basis, but then also, too, I'm a fan, though, so it's hard. It's like I'm a fan, but then I'm also, like, I guess my family's like Bears royalty, you know what I'm saying? Because my <laughs> pops is the goat, man. So it's like it's like this weird balance of of like being honest, but then being a fan, but then also understanding that the Bears are my family too. So uh, I don't think anybody in this city that's on TV, that's on radio, has to balance what I have to balance you know, on a daily basis. But the one thing that I've always said is like, I just want to be, I want to be true to the Bears fans out there of what I see and how I feel without, you know, disrespecting anybody, whether that's a player, because I understand that side as well, playing in the NFL and, and being a football player that you never want to call anybody outside their name. I'll never, ever do that. But then also being honest about what you see in between those lines when they're out there. And so, um, you know, this Caleb Williams era is ca kind of crazy. It's a, at the beginning, like we're just starting off, but it's got the signs of something that's special. It's got the signs and the feels of, man, we, the Bears, they got it right. Like they got this right. It feels right. And why not us, man? It's only, it's a, it's about time. It's time for us to to get it right. It's time for us to have that quarterback that, you know, everybody looks at and like, oh man, he he's they got a really good quarterback in Chicago. Like it's our time. Only thing is, is that right now that seems to be the case in this division as well. It's not just here in Chicago. Yeah. Green Bay's got Jordan Love. You look at how much of a of an upswing it is right now for the Detroit Lions. And the, this division is getting better. So it's like the perfect time to be able to get it right at the position. Because you can't win unless you have that the quarterback position solidified, or you don't you have a star there, a guy that can can take you to the next level. And I'm not going to. I'm, I'm we have a star in the making with Caleb Williams. I think this is just the beginning, but all signs from what I've all already saw in the college level to what I've seen early on here in Chicago, he seems like he's ready to take over that position. He's ready for all the things that come that way. And man, I'm excited to see how he develops as a, as a rookie quarterback this year. I just got a couple on this bears and I won't keep you. Uh, but you know, what a primer. I, I, I think about those names when I was on TV with you, uh, we had a debate about Mike Glennon and Mitch Trubisky, right? And then it moved over to the Justin Fields era, like you mentioned. What a primer now for the first time the team's ever been on hard knocks, and that may not be a big deal to some, but that's the Caleb Williams aura that we have now with this city, with this team. And, and I think if you put hard knocks with Mitch Trubisky or with Justin Fields, it would be like, yeah, well, this is like the guy they have. We'll see what they have in him, where now it's like Caleb is the guy. But with that narrative also comes a ton of narrative and criticism from those who have been watching this team their entire lives, who know there's never been a 4,000-yard quarterback. There's never been a quarterback for throw, to throw for 30 touchdowns in a season. What would you say the like the longtime fans who go, but they've never figured it out, why is this all of a sudden different? Because, I mean, proof's in the pudding, man. All you got to do is watch the tape I and mean, just turn on the film. I mean, it's, it's evident, man, that you don't, I, I look at the, the two other guys you were talking about and I believed in Mitch because I thought that there was something special there. And even when I looked at the bills and bears preseason game, there was times of watching Mitch where I was like, Holy cow, man. Like kid, he's, he's got some great feet. He's got great feet, man. And just the processing part, like X's and O's wise, he understands it. The processing and on the field always seems to like, there's some issues there, right? And so I can see why they thought, holy cow. Like Ryan Pace was like, yeah, this guy has something in him that's special. What, what we saw was is that 
yes, it was some of his fault, but it was also this organization trying to figure out they didn't have the right infrastructure to be able to help him take it to the next level. Plus, he didn't get the chance to be able to sit probably like he needed to, to be able to, to kind of get his feet underneath him, learn the, the pro game, because there wasn't a lot of starts at, at, at the college level to be able to, to be successful in the NFL. So hence the reason why we've seen him moving around. But credit to that young man. Still got some bags that he has in his, in you know, in his bank account. He's, yeah. he's got bags. <laughs> yes, so shouts out to him, man. Like, I'm not going to. I know how hard it is just to stay in the NFL, just for just to, to make it there, to be able to stay in the staying power. It's hard, but he has been around and moved around. Maybe he's not the, the starter, but he's shown that people still believe in him. So credit to him. Then we get to Justin Fields. I'm a huge Justin Fields fan. I've always been from the moment that he was, I saw him on QB1 on that Netflix series to then following him throughout that, that short stay at Georgia, then to Ohio State, what he did there. Young man is pretty special as well. Same thing, though. The infrastructure was not here coaching-wise for him, and he wasn't being able to take that time to process because he needed time to process as well. Um, he didn't he didn't fall into a system just like how Patrick Mahomes fell into having an Andy Reid and, and great coaches around him. And then also, too, you know, certain players around him to be successful. So he was thrown into the fire way too early. And we can see that the processing for him with the game has, still needs to figure out how to slow down. I've already, I've seen it just in, in his, his, his first preseason start in, in us with the Steelers. So now you get to Caleb and my like, Caleb, oh, dude, I know this doesn't, this doesn't give you, like all the credibility saying that you're going to be a star or you're going to be good in the NFL. But the one thing that I do know is that this dude has a Heisman trophy on his mantle, meaning you're the best college football player of that season. Whenever you, whenever you received it, like you are the best man. I turn on the film and seeing what he did at USC last year, of not having the horses around him and having to kind of put that team on his back. A lot of people always jumped off to that Notre Dame game. And yeah, he was trying to be Superman. He was trying to be Superman, turned over the ball. But when you look at his numbers and what he did with the talent that he had around him, man, I was I was impressed. Then he gets here. Now he's more game ready and more NFL ready than both of those two were combined, in my opinion, when it comes to Trubisky and Justin Fields. And so he's he's ready to go. That's how the Bears have lucked out, is that this young man is, is prime for the NFL. This is something that he's been working towards since he was a little kid. This is not like, oh, I just want to. Every goal this young man has set out for himself, he's achieved. Like, I want to, I, you know, he wanted to win a Heisman, won a Heisman, went, played college football, did that at the highest level. One of the best players that I've ever seen play the game at the position in college. And now he's here and he's ready to go. And the bears are like, holy cow. And what did they do? Ryan Poles is very smart. He set this thing up for him to be successful early on with the talent that he's put around him already. Extending DJ Moore, who's going to be there for a while, going to get Roma Dunze. You know what I mean? Keenan Allen's on here. You got Cole Komet. You got Swift in the backfield. You got a, a bunch of running backs in the backfield that you can choose. The one issue that's still there that I think could hurt the development is how is his offensive line going to be early on for this young man? If they can figure that out and get that solidified over the next, I mean, I, I'm, I'm hoping. Like right now, it's kind of hard to where you are going into the season, guys staying healthy. But moving forward, to me, that has to be the main objective to make sure that Caleb is successful. And if you do that, man, just in that Bills game, you could see the throws that were there, like certain things that you're like, holy cow, this kid's got it. And he, I think in 18 plays, he showed us everything in his toolbox, which gives me, a, a puts me at ease. And I think put a lot of people who were hoping to see him where it was like, everybody was nervous. 
he put everybody at ease and, and everybody was smiling like, man, I, I want to see more. Like, I just want to see more. And I think he's this young man that's going to keep getting better as the more reps that he has. And I know I've said that before about Justin and, and Trubisky, but this has a whole different feel to it when I say he needs to get reps because this young man knows the game, understands the game, and plays the game at a different level than both of those guys. And I just think that uh, Ryan Poles, very, very lucky, very lucky for what he did. I mean, smart of how he played this out with Carolina, but it, it played out. He played his cards right. And now look where this team is at, looking to be prime. But, Mike, it's not just about the offense. This Bears defense is is going to be lights out. And I know there's everybody uh, opposite of Montez Sweat. They're trying to find that other pass rusher. And Austin Booker, to me, seems like a young man that for the long haul, if they can figure it out, they found something there with the guy they got in the fifth round. So they're going to have to keep developing him. But the back end of that defense – Watching Jalen Johnson early in camp right now, like you, you get nervous when someone gets a bag and then you're like, oh, they're just going to take it off. Like Jalen stepped his game up even more like this defense. I know we say like a good run game always helps a quarterback, a young quarterback. Well, a good defense helps as well. And if you can get takeaways, shorten the field and keep their uh, opposing offense off the field and shorten the field a little bit, it's really going to help Caleb out. And I think that's what they have on the, with that defense, especially on the back end. They got something special there. And I think that defense is going to pick up where they left off last season. Just a very quick one, real quick. You mentioned the defense. Uh, we just saw Matthew Judon got traded um, from New England to Atlanta for a third round pick. The Bears have two second round picks uh, in 2025. You've talked about how Ryan Poles has kind of played his hand. Hassan Reddick got traded from the Eagles to the Jets, never got signed. He wants his money. I know the Bears have a little bit of money. We're stars everywhere. Is that a guy you'd like to see them bring in? Or do you want to just develop who we have on the roster right now? I mean, it's it's possible. If you can if you can make it work, why not? I mean, Sam Reddick would definitely change change a lot of things. And it, it all depends on where you see where Ryan Pohl sees this ball club, right? Like if if you believe right now that I, I'm I'm in I'm in patient mode going into this season, so I I know what everybody else is expecting, and this is Bears fans, and I get it, I get it. They have an opportunity, and to be able to make the playoffs. I mean, it, this division is so good. I mean, is it possible that we do see three teams out of the NFC North make the playoffs? I mean, that's that's how good this division is. It's I just it's crazy to think about. So it all depends on what Ryan Poles is believes and sees in this ball club and yeah like if you got money there why not but also too i'm i'm more interested in making sure that you solidify this offensive line and i know it, it might that might be patchwork once we start seeing cuts here of figure out how you can kind of piece this thing together if there's someone that you feel could that that you could bring in because the development of caleb williams to me is way more important right but I also understand how important it is in a division with, with Jordan Love and who everybody's looking at as being this next star, could be the best in the NFC. Getting him on his back is is what is most important, is is huge if you're trying to win games. So I, I, I think they got to balance it out. And money is there. So if Poles believes that they can find a way to be able to get it done, um, that does definitely add to your defense and how good it, it can be going into this season. So I'm listen, it's not my money, but I'm always here to spend the bears money. If they want to <laughs> let me spend it, like why, why not and change the game. But the, if you think about it, Montez sweat is so good. And what we saw in a short period of time, last year coming over from the commanders that you start to think about what happens, what happens if, if some God forbid something happens to him, then then what? Because he is such a difference maker, and I think it's the game of football. Yeah. Injuries are going to happen, so you have to be able to not only develop talent, but you also you need depth at the highest level, and it is tough because you just don't know. And to win a championship, it's not just about being the best and having the best players. You also need a little luck to go your way as well. And you see it with teams that 
you know, make it to the postseason and make runs, you got to have some luck on your side. And the one thing that I always do watch is injuries. Injuries can derail your season. And so can you go into a season fairly healthy? And I think that's the balance that we see with Holes and Iberflus when it comes to playing these starters early on. You got to balance of getting them their reps, but also taking care of them so you can be ready to go once this thing's kicked off for real. Because that right there gives you an opportunity to be successful and hopefully get to the postseason. Jared Payton, thank you so much for your time. Legendary uh, in your own right. I honestly mean it from the bottom of my heart when I say thank you for when we were both at the Sunday night game, the compliments you you paid respect towards me. When that was my first ever game in person, it, it meant a lot. So keep doing all that you're doing. I think not only as royalty in the Bears family, I think you are a great representative of Chicago sports broadcasting as well as the uh, Chicago Bears fan base. So Thank you so much for your time. All the best. Hopefully we can talk during the season as well. Appreciate you, Mike, man. Have a good one. Thanks for having me on. Thank you. At Peyton Sun on Twitter. Make sure to give him a follow on Twitter and Instagram. Thank you. See you, man. Yeah.